Hello, child of God. The purpose of this video is to both teach about deliverance from demons and to command deliverance from demons from all the listeners of this video. Both the ministry disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ and Christians oppressed by demons need to learn and understand the basics in order to operate in power, faith, and love. At this moment, there's a war going on between Almighty God and Satan for your attention to this video. The Holy Spirit is your teacher. He will give you a clear understanding to the principles of deliverance from demons. But Satan's goal is to distract you, confuse you, bore you, seduce you, and do anything else that he can do to deceive you about deliverance from demons. Plain, simple distraction is one of his biggest tools. Since each of us begin at different levels of knowledge, I have provided links in this video for other teaching subject matter which are directly relative to your faith in Jesus for the work of deliverance. Deliverance as a ministry is the tip of the battle sword and you will always be in conflict with demons whose goal is to discredit and kill you. Please humble yourself to the Holy Spirit and watch the supporting videos. Even if you know all the information and you're bored to tears, you're giving the Holy Spirit an opportunity to teach you deep things about deliverance that I have not even said. The more you are aware of the presence of the Holy Spirit and His guidance, the easier and more effective this ministry will be to you. We begin with a simple prayer. You can use your own words, but I will begin with this example. Please pray along with me, and we both will be in agreement. Father God, that's right, just speak the words. Pray to Almighty God the Father. Father God, I ask you now to forgive my sin and wash me with the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. I acknowledge that you sent the Holy Spirit to teach me and to help me in this life. Please teach me about discernment of spirits and deliverance from demons and all else you want me to learn. Give me both the right questions and the right answers concerning these issues. Add to this wisdom and understanding. Teach me to be always aware of the presence of the Holy Spirit. I gratefully received this gift from you as it was purchased by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And no other payment is needed. Amen. Now, child of God, let's jump right in head first and look at the demons the disciples could not cast out. And when they were come to the multitude, there came to him a certain man kneeling down to him and saying, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is lunatic and sore vexed, for oft times he falleth into the fire, and oft into the water. And I brought him to thy disciples, and they could not cure him. Then Jesus answered and said, O faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him hither to me. And Jesus rebuked the devil, and he departed out of him, and the child was cured from that very hour. Then came the disciples to Jesus apart and said, Why could not we cast him out? And Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief. For verily I say unto you, If ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. Howbeit this kind goeth not out, but by prayer and fasting. Because of Adam's sin, all of mankind had the knowledge of good and evil written on our hearts. And as mankind sinned, he gives authority to Satan to control and destroy him. This world was the kingdom of Satan. Mankind serves Satan through sin and has absolutely no authority to cast out demons. Jesus plainly said, if Satan cast out Satan, how then would his kingdom stand? You can disregard all the old movies you may have seen where the witches or Frankenstein or some magic portion cast out demons because Satan's kingdom just does not work like that. People that go to a witch doctor or a sorcerer for deliverance end up controlled by bigger and more evil, powerful demons. When the commandments in the law were given through Moses, the law ruled the people God called his own sons. The law had the promise of blessings and cursings for the family of God. And each year a sin offering was made, which abolished all authority of Satan to attack and to control the family of God, even if they sinned during the year before. The priests and the prophets were anointed with the Holy Spirit, 
and had the authority over Satan within the family of God. And even Michael the archangel and his army were in constant war with Satan and his angels over the family of God. Satan's kingdom was completely and totally overpowered by the forces sent by Almighty God for the people whom obeyed the law of Moses. They were called the children of God. So what is Satan to do? He would tempt the children of God to sin and rebel against Almighty God and stop obeying the law. So the blessings of the law were no longer in effect to the disobedient. But the curses of the law, the word of God, became in full effect. I'll give you an example of how innocent children become demonized. And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image, or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. The Lord is long-suffering and of great mercy, forgiving iniquity and transgression, and by no means clearing the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation. The Apostle Paul mentioned that we see through these spiritual kingdoms as looking through a dark glass. Every demonized person is not in the same box. Sometimes we just do not know how or why a person is oppressed by demons. The normal example is that we send our children to school clean, but sometimes they come home with hair lice. Once we find out that they have hair lice, it becomes our responsibility as parents to do whatever is necessary to deliver them from the lice. These disciples confronted a demon that caused self-destructive seizures in the boy, but the demon refused to come out. Jesus did not get upset with the demon. Jesus just rebuked him and forced him to leave. The disciples had been casting out evil spirits for roughly three years after the Lord Jesus Christ had breathed the Holy Spirit upon them. They altogether did not have enough faith to cast this type of spirit out. But Jesus also noted to them that this is a type that only comes out by prayer and fasting. When we cook this all down, we have authority in the name of Jesus to command the spirits to come out of a person. All of these unclean spirits refuse to come out because their goal is to steal, to kill, and destroy. And we are like these disciples whom have the authority in the name of Jesus. But authority over demons is only as effective as your faith in the power and of the will of the Holy Spirit. A key in the kingdom of God is to practice the presence of the Holy Spirit within you. We see into this dark kingdom of evil spirits like looking into a dark glass. When the Holy Spirit speaks to you and tells you to command a deaf and dumb spirit to come out of a blind child, you quit believing the symptoms you see and what you think you know and speak to the actual demon person that the Holy Spirit told you to speak to. He will leave his victim immediately because it's the Holy Spirit himself forcing that demon to come out of him. We are standing in a spiritual cave so dark that you cannot see your hand an inch off your nose. We cannot see the demons. And if we start waving our sword around, someone will get stuck in the air and be greatly offended. We can still swing our swords in the dark and say, By the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ, I command all of you demons to come out now. And we expect those demons to throw the victim on the floor and come out screaming when what we really might get is an offended person that thinks you're an 11-year-old child. Let's turn the lights on in the spiritual realm first before you even begin your deliverance work. Jesus said, My sheep know my voice, and a stranger they will not follow. And we need to hear and understand the voice of the Lord Jesus Christ. Ask the Holy Spirit in faith to tell you what to do. And listen to what he says. If the demons have a right to be there, you need to remove their right first. Then the deliverance will be a lot easier. Every obese person has major diet and exercise issues, and that's a given fact. We have no authority to force him to exercise, but we can cast out a demon spirit of laziness. We cannot force him to eat healthy amounts of food. 
but we can cast out the spirit of gluttony, and so on. I can give you a pattern of possible actions to start with, but every deliverance is different. And the first step for each of us is to always ask the Holy Spirit what to do and expect Him to answer you. Do not drown Him out with 30 questions that you're not listening or looking for an answer to. You're probably in a hurry, but He is not. Be patient and kind and expect a timely answer. If you do not understand the words or the instructions the first time, politely ask again. But bind away from the conversation every unclean spirit and all the influence of Satan. Let's suppose a pastor anointed is somewhere miles away from you and you feel the leading of the Holy Spirit to work deliverance on him. You have the authority, but you do not have the power. The Holy Spirit has the power to enforce your authority in the name of Jesus. After you pray for instructions, you step out of this dark cave in faith and you say, By the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive all of pastor anointed sins. I speak to you, Satan, and to your kingdom. Pastor anointed is a blood-washed child of the Most High God. The Lord Jesus Christ died on the cross and took away every curse against pastor anointed. You have no claim against him. You have no legal right on him. You have no hold on him. The Lord Jesus Christ has completely destroyed you, and my heavenly Father can see you tormented in the lake of fire. By the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ, I revoke every right, every claim, every reason you have to influence Pastor Anointed in any way. And by the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ, I command you to leave Pastor Anoint his body, his mind, his spirit, his soul, his house, and leave the country now and do not return. Demons are now looking for a loophole in the law and will remain there as long as they can, even though they know they have to go. Deliverance is a gift from Almighty God to Pastor Anointed, purchased by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. You are willing. The Holy Spirit is willing but is pastor anointed willing. Pastor anointed loves food more than he loves God. The demons have left the country, but because of pastor anointed's will, they will return and bring more demons back with them, and the second state of pastor anointed will be worse than the first. The reason is pastor anointed continues in the sin of gluttony even after he's been delivered from the unclean spirits. The point is, you have the authority, the Holy Spirit has the power, and Satan has to obey. But pastor anointed's will can override the end results. Child of God, when we speak a command to Satan's kingdom with the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ, we are speaking for the Lord Jesus Christ himself. And by his blood, he purchased deliverance for every child of the Most High God. The Holy Spirit will enforce the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ now as I speak. If you are willing to be delivered from spirits that influence obesity, join an agreement with my commands against all the demons troubling you. If this is not your issue, then please click one of the links you see posted. By the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive all of the sins of this child of God viewing this video. I speak to you, Satan, and to your entire kingdom. This child of God has been washed in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ died on the cross and took away every curse against this child of God. You have no legal claim on this child of God. You have no legal hold on this child of God. The Lord Jesus Christ has completely destroyed you, and my Heavenly Father can and see you being tormented in the lake of fire. By the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ, I totally revoke every right, every claim, and every reason you have to influence this child of God in any way. And by the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ, I command you to leave this child of God's body, this child of God's mind, this child of God's spirit, this child of God's soul, this child of God's house, and anywhere else you might inhabit concerning this child of God, and leave this country now and do not return. Child of God, you are receiving the blessings of the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ on you now. Just give thanks unto God.